Hi again, my name is Andy Munitz, Training Manager for Sony Broadcast and Professional Products. And if you've recently purchased one of our UWP V-Series wireless microphone systems, this video is intended to help you get started using it and to introduce you to its menu system and some of its features. As you may know, UWP series packages include various types of wireless transmitters, such as a handheld mic, a plug-on transmitter, or a body pack transmitter. From a menu setting point of view, though, all three types of UWP transmitters operate the same way. So, in this video, we'll focus on our most popular package, the UWP V1, which includes a body pack transmitter and a portable receiver. Some of the things we'd like to do in this video include showing you how to control many of the functions on the units, such as how to change the frequency setting of the transmitter and receiver, how to use the built-in clear channel scanning function of the receiver to help you choose the best channel to set your system on, how to adjust microphone gain, how to change the RF output power of the transmitter, how to set the battery timer, and how to monitor sound directly on the UWP receiver using a pair of headphones. So, let's get to it. If you're using one UWP system, it's a good idea when you arrive on location to use the function called Clear Channel Scan to make sure that you set up to operate on an unoccupied RF frequency. This will reduce the possibility of experiencing interference from other sources of RF transmission, including interference from a UHF TV station or another wireless microphone currently in use. But if you're not in a large city or a major metropolitan area where you might have lots of wireless frequencies already being used, you might not encounter problems with the channel your system is already on. However, in a crowded environment, or just to be safe, it's a really good idea to let the unit scan all available channels to let you know which might be the best frequency to set your system on. So to begin with, let's go through how to properly set up the portable receiver unit. First, let's select a frequency group to perform a clear channel scan on. In the UWP system, a group is a mathematically pre-tested selection of channels that are known to work together. That is, they won't cause cross-interference on any other UWP wireless systems that could be in use in the same environment. So, for the purposes of this demo, let's select Group 9. You see, Group 9 is the most flexible group in that it contains 16 frequencies to choose from. We'll start out by putting the unit into its setting mode by holding down the set button while turning on the power switch. If this is the first time you've powered up your system, the display initially shows up with your unit's channel block, 42 or channel 30, depending on which frequency range model you've purchased. If it comes up reading a different setting, simply press the set button until you see the display indicate 00.4201 for block 42 or 00.3001 for block 30. Next, hold down the set button until the first two digits of the display starts to blink. These two digits represent the group number. Once the first two digits are blinking, press the plus or minus button until the first two digits indicate 09. This is group 9. Once group 9 is selected, press the set button again to confirm the selection of group 9, and the group number will stop blinking. Now you'll notice that the last four digits start blinking. These last four digits are the frequency selection number. But for the moment, just press set again, and you'll notice the display changes to the actual frequency that is selected. By the way, if at any time you want to be in the setting mode and the display stops blinking, it's just because the mode has timed out. All you have to do to go back to the setting mode is hold down the set button for at least a couple of seconds. Now, let's enter clear channel scan mode and perform a scan of frequencies in group 9. By the way, here's a menu shortcut. While holding down the set button, press the plus key and notice a blinking scan plus on the receiver display. This tells you the receiver is ready to perform clear channel scanning. Press the plus button to start scanning and you'll see the display indication group 9 along with the active scan scrolling indicator. When the scan is completed, you'll be able to select from all unoccupied frequencies within group 9. The first available clear frequency will be displayed as blinking, but if you want to proceed to display the next clear frequency, just simply press the plus button again. At this point, you can continue to press the plus button multiple times and see all of the clear frequencies available in group 9, or press the minus button to start a new clear frequency scan. 
Once the group 9 scan is completed, select the clear frequency, for example, 4205, by pressing the set button again to confirm the frequency selection. Notice the frequency number stops blinking. Now the display indicates 094205, meaning you're operating the receiver in group 9 on unused UHF TV channel 42, and you've successfully selected frequency number 5 in that TV channel space. By the way, within each unused TV channel, there are a total of 47 different wireless mic channels that one can conceivably choose from. So, clear channel scan can be used anytime you want to confirm the availability of unoccupied RF frequencies in your specific location. Now let's go to the transmitter and enter the newly selected frequency, so we'll have a matched transmitter and receiver pair. Start by powering on the unit while holding down the set button. You'll see the current frequency selected blinking on the display, so press the plus or minus button repeatedly until the frequency number matches the frequency selected on the receiver. In our case, we'll select 4205. And then we'll just simply power the transmitter off to enter our choice, which sets the unit to our newly selected frequency. Now turn the transmitter on again and confirm wireless transmission of audio is working OK by looking at the green indicator lights and audio meters on the unit. Now that we're set to operate on a clear channel, another menu selection of the transmitter I'd like to make sure you know about is the RF output power. You'll see that the menu setting choice here includes low and high power. The low setting is best for use when the transmitter will be used fairly close to the receiver or for when you have multiple wireless systems in use in the same location. And the high power setting is best used when the transmitter will be located far away from the receiver, for example, when operating at distances greater than about 30 feet. To see the current RF power setting, look at the top center position of the transmitter display and see the letter H for high power or the letter L for low power. To change the power setting, simply hold down the set button, again while powering on the transmitter, then press the set button until PO, which is short for power, is displayed. Press plus to select H for high power or press minus to select L for low power. Turn the transmitter off, then on again and confirm that the display indicates the RF power output setting you've chosen. Another transmitter and portable receiver menu display that I want to make sure you know about is the accumulated battery running time indicator. This display shows how long your wireless units have been powered on for after you put in a fresh set of batteries, so you know about how much battery time you have remaining. If you're using high quality AA alkaline batteries, the transmitter will operate for about eight hours. So when you install fresh batteries, you need to reset the accumulated time indicator to zero. While in the menu selection mode, just press the set button repeatedly until the time display appears. Press the minus button to reset the timer to zero. This is really useful because, for example, if you use the units for only a couple of hours on yesterday's shoot, but only need the system for about three hours on today's shoot, you don't need to change your batteries. Over the course of a year, you can save real money on your cost for batteries just by using this handy function. Again, just remember to reset your timer to zero whenever you put in new batteries. Well, at this point, it's a good idea to connect some high-quality headphones like the Sony MDR7506s to your receiver's monitor output jack and confirm your wireless system is working properly. By the way, you can adjust your headphone monitoring level on the receiver by simply pressing the plus or minus buttons. Now let's adjust the attenuation level of the lavalier microphone to properly match the transmitter. This setting can have a real impact on the sound quality of your signal, so it's worth playing with a bit to set properly. While in the setting mode, press the transmitter set button until you see the ATT display. Then just press the plus or minus buttons to adjust the mic attenuation level while listening through the receiver. A setting of zero attenuation means that you are letting in the fullest signal that the microphone can deliver. But that may be too much for the input preamp of the transmitter. So you might turn up the attenuation to lower it a bit. At this point, you can also confirm you're getting a good audio level by checking the meters on the device you might be recording to. Well, so far so good. Hopefully you've been following along with these setting choices on your own units and it all seems clear. 
Now, if you're using just one UWP system, you're all ready to go. But if you plan to use more than one UWP system in the same location, this requires coordinating frequencies so the multiple UWP systems don't interfere with one another. And this is why Sony provides built-in, pre-programmed groups of frequencies to choose from. Don't forget that the example we used above, group 9, offers a selection for up to 16 wireless mic frequencies that are all pre-tested for when you want to use up to 16 UWP wireless microphone systems at one time. Don't forget, as we did earlier, you can use the clear channel scan function on each receiver to find available compatible frequencies within the same pre-programmed group. When you complete setting each transmitter frequency, don't forget to leave each of these transmitters on. Then, when you perform a clear channel scan on the next receiver, it will automatically pass by frequencies you've already chosen for use by the other UWP transmitters and display the next available unoccupied frequency in that group for you to select. And again, repeat this process for all UWP systems in use to ensure reliable multi-channel operation. Of course, for further detailed information about the pre-programmed groups for multi-channel system use, you can refer to the frequency list PDF document included on the CD-ROM that came supplied with the UWP package. Well, I think that's enough to get you started with your UWP system and to ensure that you get all of the sound quality and benefits that the UWP system was designed to offer. If you'd like further information or for more information on our entire range of Pro Audio products, including both wired and wireless microphones, portable recorders, and mixers, please visit our website at sony.com slash proaudio. And of course, thanks for watching.